This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good night, good night, Suzanne Henwood. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful night? Yeah, well, for me, I'm in Auckland, so for me, it's middle of the day, and it's beautifully (laughs) sunny and blue skies, and yeah, beautiful day here in Auckland. That's wonderful. It it always fascinates me, you know. I'm in the the darkness of the night, and you are in the brightness of the day. It's so so (laughs) fascinating, but thankfully, you are here. Do tell us which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history. Yeah, so for me, what kind of made me think, oh, I'd love to talk about what I do is MBIT and Embraining. I don't know if you've heard of that. It's all about, it's an applied neuroscience that came out of Australia in 2012, and it's all about using your multiple brains to do cool stuff. Tell me more, please. Yeah, so we teach from the very latest science that we have a head, heart, and gut brain, not just head. And so within coaching, we, um, we now coach to head, heart, to gut, and at master coach level, the autonomic nervous system and the pelvic brain, as well as intelligence, intelligencing systems. So it's really exciting. It, um, it really helps people kind of find out about themselves at a much deeper level. And because they understand themselves better, they can then connect out in the world better. And my view and many people's view at the moment is we're losing that sense of connection with each other. And so it's such an important area of work in so many different disciplines. I just love what I can do, what I do do. Um, And I'm here, I'm sure you can hear that in my voice. It's an absolute passion of mine. I love being able to walk alongside people and help them to deeply reconnect with themselves and find out what they can be doing in the world. How long does it take to to go through a multi-brain integration uh, session? It depends where the starting point is. Um, I guess my average sort of client might see me four or six times, about an hour and a half a time. Um, but some people take longer if they've got lots of issues from the past that they haven't ever resolved or because of whatever childhood environment they were in, they never ever developed the nervous system in the most optimal way. They might take a little bit longer. And for some people, if they're very focused on a contextual issue, it might just be one or two meetings. Hmm. So if it's sorting a conflict with somebody else, it might just be, yeah, one, maybe even just one meeting to help them change the way they're reacting to the situation i hear the songs of chickens is it chickens or birds in the background birds in the background yeah Ooh, i can imagine what type of bird is that do you know i can hear twoies uh i think i can hear minor birds i'm not sure what else is out there today Sweet. well i love background <laughs> songs all right so you can see my brain works uh, multiple ways as well right yeah <laughs> multitasking very impressive thank you so what's the best place for someone that's listening to connect with you do you do this via online like can i connect in a zoom room or over skype and and do this yeah absolutely i have i have zoom capability um i often coach on skype um so probably the best place to find out about me and what i do is through my website which is embraining for success where the four is a number, not the F-O-R. So mbraining, multiple braining, for success.com is my website. And then there's an amazing website centrally called mbraining.com that is full of beautiful free resources, interviews with remarkable thinkers, all the leading thinkers in this field, um, free audios, free resources, written resources on there. So you know, a, an easy Google search, you would find out lots more about us and what we're up to. Yeah, definitely dive in and check that out. I'm fascinated yeah. by it. Yeah, I, I want to click immediately, but I do not want <laughs> to lose my attention and focus on this conversation, <laughs> right? So I'll definitely check that out. Again, MBIT, Multi-Brain Integration Technologies. Well, yeah, M-braining is the field, M-braining, because the brain is 
a dynamic it's a verb it's what we do it's not a static entity it's, it's constantly yeah. new neurons and new networks and new connections so yeah embraining to make it active and live and dynamic and there we go well tell me uh, it seems as though you have a knack for helping others uh where did you learn that from if i'm accurate yeah, yeah, I've, I've got a passion for being there to support others. I came to my professional life through healthcare. My initial roots were as a diagnostic radiographer um, with a particular expertise in trauma. So that fast pace, constantly adapting, never sure what's going to be brought through the door by an ambulance. Mm. Um, that was where I kind of first really got to know people and people in difficult circumstances who really needed your help. Much more on a technical basis then, I guess. But as I went on, I moved into education to try to influence the standards of radiography on a wider basis than just my department. And from that into uh, managing people, which um, can be a challenge when you haven't got uh, people in a good place in the workplace. So just gradually came to this whole skill set of understanding people, personality types, psychology uh, coaching, NLP, and then more latterly embraining. Um, so it's been a woven pathway, a career pathway, um, culminated about oh, 10, 10, 12 years ago as an associate professor in health and social sciences. Wow. And then I jump ship from that into running my own business a couple of years ago. And now that's what I do full time. Hmm. Well, congratulations, Dr. Susan. Thank congratulations. you. Well done, well done. <laughs> Tell me one other thing that you've done consistently over the last three years, please. It could be something for fun. Yeah, I, I think for me, what came up in that question was around learning new stuff about the human body. So bearing in mind, you know, there's 7 billion people on the planet and we've been learning for a long time. It absolutely absolutely fascinates me that we are still learning about our bodies in new ways structures we didn't know existed functions we didn't know were possible and so i'm rampantly curious about the human body and its potential and what more we could unleash how does it make you feel like looking at who you are like how uh, your body functions and uh, the information you've learned over the past three years how does it make you feel are you like oh it's too much or are you like wow this this could actually help a little bit of both i have had times where i've thought you know i've spent 20 years developing myself i thought i knew myself and then I discover I know very little and there's all this other stuff I didn't know. And it can feel a little bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But having the tools and the structure to really explore that and understand what it means has been exciting and humbling for me. Um, it set me on a new level of personal development, a new level of knowing myself. And that's humbling, working out the bits that you've tried to hide that you don't necessarily like as much. Mm -hmm. And embracing those, working out what they can do for you in a good way. Um, and then exciting about opening doors that I didn't even know existed, opening possibilities that I had never even thought of. So, yeah, it's a bit of a mix. That's amazing. So just to someone that's listening, why they should take on the idea, at least, of considering finding out more about themselves and their bodies. I think we're at really interesting times in the world where nothing is certain, where there's chaotic environments, where the workplaces are more stressed than they've ever been. And I think the solution will come from people who really get to know themselves so that they can go and work with others in a different way and literally change the way we do work in life from the ground floor up. So that's why I think that not that they should learn it but why i would invite them to go and explore it certainly that's been the benefit for me of me getting to grips with it in a new way um, it has changed the way i view life and it's changed the way i do work with other people for the better 
Love it. An amazing audience. Again, you're hearing it live from Dr. Susan Henwood, and you can connect with her at mbrainingforsuccess.com. It's in the show notes, so you can click there and get to that place as well. Dr. Susan, let's switch gears for a moment. Let me now invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Dr. Susan, <laughs> what's your earliest childhood memory? I I, it's interesting. I think it's probably one that may look quite negative on the surface, but I, I have this memory of being carried in my father's arms to be taken into a hospital theatre for an operation. How old but do you it's think not. You yeah, I think I was about five, and and I actually don't think it was a negative memory. I think in that moment when it could have been quite scary, I felt completely held and safe and protected and rather than going on the trolley like you would expect to that blessing and privilege to be carried by my dad met kind of changed that whole experience for me Hmm. um so yeah that was the first memory i went back to can i add something as well of course i love the concept of what is prepared for you as well so with uh that picture the hospital is prepared And of course, with that is everything that's necessary to treat uh, what you may have suffered with or what may be an injury. And that, Mm. my friend, is fascinating because you've actually become that person who is there Mm. as the radiographer, right, at that time, uh, who is prepared for what comes in. And now you're doing it again with the entire embraining concept, right, where you're preparing yourself to ensure that the person that comes, uh, whether it be on the trolley or in the arms of someone else, so that you can help them with whatever they need help with. Interesting, eh? Fractals from an early age. Yeah, yeah. I love it. If we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? (laughs) This is going to sound really nerdy, but The Hills Are Alive from The Sound of Music. Oh, really? I I love that as well. Like, what's nerdy in that? Oh, it's got a bit of an old-fashioned reputation, hasn't it? But when we were kids, it was played every Christmas. Yeah. And so for me, it takes me back to family Christmas times. Um, yeah, that yeah. I, I think that's what made me think of it is is that link to family Christmas holidays, being at home. I was in the UK then, so it was cold outside and we were warm and cozy inside. So good memories come with that song. Yes, I love that song as well. Yeah. The hills are alive. And you know, it's really cool too, because there was, if I'm not mistaken, like there was this, like the father's position in that movie was really one of strength and mm. uh, that warmth, wasn't it? Like at the mm-hmm. ending, yeah, yeah, where he practically broke down and uh, like became like the, the soft daddy, not the soft, the emotional daddy, if you would, or you got to see that side of him. Super cool stuff. We could always dig deeper yeah. into that, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friend, well, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? Yeah. Dr. Henwood, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Some people, yes, not one individual. Are you married? Yes. Do you have children? Two wonderful children. Do you believe in God? I do. Do you have an inner circle of friends? I do, and they are very precious to me. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Absolutely not. How about three hours a week? N- no. What about, well, oh, a week maybe, closer right, to a week. All right, maybe. yeah, it's, a, it's like a, a trick question right there. What about <laughs> screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Oh, a lot less. What about reading? How often do you read? I read a lot. Um, I'm an avid reader. Hmm. Dr. Enwood, if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, Susan Henwood, what would you say Mm -hmm. that is? I've spent a lifetime learning to be imperfectly, perfectly me, and I'm still learning. 
Love it. It sounds like a, like a line from uh, The Hills Are Alive. <laughs> the songs of music. Love it. All right, but I but, won't sing it for you. Well, I'm tempted. I'm really tempted. But um, yeah, these things are immortalized, right? So. <laughs> You know, what goes out on the web can never be taken back. Exactly, so right? in public. Exactly. So I'll hold out. I mean, I do. I could go. Let me go. Let me go. So here I go. I'm joking. Of course I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Henwood, this has been such a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? I think trust yourselves. Trust yourselves. If anything I've resonated, you just either feel it in your heart or your gut. Go and explore what embraining is because it's been a life changer for me. Um, and it's my pleasure now to change, you know, to help other people change in that way as well. I love it again, Dr. Susan Henwood. Great pleasure. Thanks for passing by. A pleasure I treasure. Uh, thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12 Minute Convos with Angel Jones. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This segment has been brought to you by Amazel Enterprise. Thank you.